It is Throwback Thursday, where we plunge deep into our vast CBC archives. 66 years ago, the Ripple Rock explosion took place in Seymour Narrows near Campbell River. That planned blast was carried out to cut the danger to mariners posed by an underwater mountain. And the explosion was broadcast live on CBC News. This funny looking place we're in is our bunker. You can see it's pretty well constructed. And as you can also see, it's just about as full of people as it can po pro possibly be. Down at the far end, the CBC uh, radio commentators, uh, film cameramen by the store, uh, then our colleague from the French uh, network, uh, Bill and I, and just over here, uh, the two cameras. Of course, you can't see the camera that's taking the pictures, but there's the other one. And out on its snout, that great long snorkel that sticks out there is a 25-inch lens, and that'll pretty well put uh, Ripple Rock right smack in the middle of your living room when it goes up or out or sideways or whatever it's going to do in two minutes and 15 seconds right now. How about the countdown, Judd? Well, the countdown, Bill, will be your baby. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. That was the end of Ripple Rock, one of the largest non-nuclear planned explosions of its time. Here to tell us more about it is Sandra Parrish, Executive Director of the Campbell River Museum. Sandra, thanks for joining us, first of all. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Tell us, why was Ripple Rock so dangerous? Well, you know, at, uh, it was a large under, uh, underground, underwater mountain, and at low tide, the top peak was only about nine feet below the water. So you can imagine this was a very narrow passage. Uh, there was a lot of um, whirlpools and all sorts of things. So it would be an easy thing to end up hitting it. And a lot of vessels did. So it was quite treacherous. Uh, do we have any sense of how many people were killed or, or, or drowned by it? Well, I mean, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to know, but, but we, the, the number of 114 within our knowledge mm -hmm. is, is commonly used, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of lives. Why was it's blowing- a lot of lives. Yeah. Uh, why was blowing it up considered a, a marvel of engineering? Well, at the time, um, there was uh, there was you know a, a number of different engineers and mining companies that were involved in it, and they had to develop a specific um, drill to use in those sort of circumstances. It was a, quite a massive tunnel all under all under the seabed, uh, and they just really did not know how much what the impact was going to be. So, quite a feat. We're, I mean, we're looking at some of this footage again. It is immense how how big this blast was. Um, and one of the commentators said, "Well, we're in this sturdy frame wood, uh, I guess, protective <laughs> cover. What did planners do to keep people safe? Because that is an amazing blast." Oh, well, you know, it was one of those things where the town the, the town was very small at that time, of course, uh, and people were frightened. You know, people took their china off their shelves and boarded up their windows and there was people that gathered in homes to watch it live. There was even a group that went over to, I believe, April Point, where they, which was the closest they could get to it, to view it. But then when it happened, there was not a single thing felt in town. Yeah. It was like the big event that wasn't an event uh, in, in terms of what they were cons uh, felt, but nobody knew what the, the impact was going to be. Mm -hmm. And you can hear that in that commentator's yeah. voice. <laughs> they're in that. They're in that uh, 
bunker thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's going to make it through or not. <laughs> well, I mean, considering how much, how much, how many, explo how much explosive and, and and how much rock they actually had to move, uh, is it? Mm -hmm. And tell us about at, now that it was after it was destroyed. What did that do for the for the for the passage of vessels around Seymour Narrows? Well, it certainly did make it a much safer passage. Uh, the top is uh, down about uh, 42 feet on a, a low tide, so that's nice and safe. But it is still very, you know, very much a, a treacherous body of water. You know, you have to choose your, your time to go through there and uh, choose just the right tides. And, and of course, uh, in about 19, I think it was 1985, that we had that um, cruise ship, the Sundancer, that... Mm just sort of scuffed the edge of it and um, was maybe the one of the, the more recent victims mm -hmm. of Ripple Rock. Well, we're glad, mm -hmm. hopefully, there are not any more. Sandra Parrish, Executive Director of the Campbell River Museum, we appreciate your time and your insight. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Have a good day.